this is an A-level biology video and it's all about pedigree diagrams. The easiest way to teach you this topic is to go through past paper questions. Let's just point out a few key things though. So first of all, a pedigree chart shows the inheritance of a particular trait within a family and it usually tracks a particular trait through several generations. And so really you have a family tree. Notice that a square always represents a male individual and a circle represents a female. If you have that solid filled in shape, then it means that the particular individual has the trait. If it's empty or unshaded, it means that they do not have the trait. The straight horizontal line between the male and the female represents a mating line. So we're talking about this line here or here. And then a vertical line descending from that line represents the offspring. So we can see in this first example that they have four children. Two of those children are male, two are female. And notice that the mother up here and the firstborn son over here have the particular trait. It's important to notice that the pedigree only shows the phenotype, not the genotype. So we're looking at the trait. And then here's a few extra points. So there's a few rules of logic to help you understand the genetics. So if neither parent shows the trait, then the trait by definition can't be dominant. And therefore, we can infer that the trait could be recessive and that either parent or potentially both could be heterozygous carriers. If one parent shows the trait, the trait could be dominant and the affected parent could be heterozygous, while the unaffected parent is not a carrier. So they do not carry that allele for the particular trait. If one parent shows the trait, then we could infer that the trait is recessive, that the affected parent is homozygous, while the unaffected parent could be a heterozygous carrier. But now I've talked you through some key notes, I now want to take you through an example so that you can understand that the bits I was just talking about now, you don't necessarily need to remember those off by heart. As long as you understand the pedigree diagram, then you'll actually be able to work out the answer without learning a load of notes just for the sake of it. So we're looking here at night blindness, and it says that people with night blindness have difficulty seeing in dim light. The allele for night blindness is dominant. That's so important to the allele for normal vision, which is lowercase n, and these alleles are not carried on the sex chromosomes. So that's another important thing to notice. Let's have a look at what we have. So here's our affected female. They have night blindness. I'm just gonna make a note here. Here's the female, they have night blindness. And remember that that night blindness is caused by that dominant allele. Here's the male who's unaffected. They have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven children. These two are sons, then they have three daughters, another son, and finally another daughter. And the shaded ones show affected individuals with night blindness. So individual 12 is a boy. What is his phenotype? So make sure you remember that the phenotype is the physical appearance. We're looking at this individual here. Because we know that night blindness is caused by a dominant allele, it makes sense, therefore, that both of these must be meaning that there's no way that individual 12 can have night blindness. So we're going to say that they have normal vision because remember, we're looking at the physical appearance. What is the genotype of individual one? Explain the evidence for your answer. So we're looking at this individual here. We're looking for genotypes, so we need a combination of alleles. I've already pointed out that they must have a capital N in order to have night blindness. The question is now, does individual one have the homozygous dominant genotype or the heterozygous version of that genotype? And the way to work that out is by looking at all the offspring. Obviously, if they had this genotype, then every single one of the offspring would have night blindness. This isn't the case, which stands to reason, therefore, that they are heterozygous. So let's write a reason for that. So she must have a capital N in order to have night blindness and also a lowercase n because some of her children have normal vision. So make sure you write that down because I'm now going to rub it out so we can write the third answer nice and easily without getting muddled. So what is the probability that the next child born to individuals 10 and 11 will be a girl with night blindness? Show your working. So two things to point out. First of all, that they have to be a girl and second of all, that they have night blindness. So we're looking at individuals 10 and 11. So in order to work this out, we need to actually do a Punnett square. Because we're looking at individual 10, which is a female, we know that they have two X chromosomes. 
In terms of referring to the night blindness aspect, we know that they're heterozygous because the father can't have passed on a dominant allele because otherwise they would have night blindness too. Looking at the male individual now, their sex chromosomes are XY. We know that they're unaffected, so therefore they must be homozygous recessive. So now we can do a Punnett square. So there's the mother. There's the father. Let's do that cross. And then now let's match up these genotypes with the phenotypes. So we know that this individual will be a girl with night blindness. This individual will be a girl with normal vision. This offspring will be a boy with night blindness. And then lastly, this individual will be a boy with normal vision. So if we answer the question, what is the probability that the next girl born to individuals 10 and 11 will be a girl with night blindness? It's 25% or 0 0.25 if we're going to be official and refer to probability.